everyone. Um, my name is JJ or Jessalyn Janice. Um, I am the maker behind Handmade by Jessalyn Janice on Etsy and on Instagram. I make project backs and stitch markers and I just started dyeing my own yarn to sell in the shop as well. And I donate a portion of each sale to Kayakota Humane Society here in my town. Um, they are a no-kill nonprofit animal rescue and they just go way above and beyond um, any other shelter that I've familiarized myself with. So they, they definitely deserve it. Um, and yeah, I, I want to join the conversation on YouTube in the knitting community. I spend a lot of my time on YouTube watching other podcasters, um, so I figured I'd give it a shot and see how it goes. So if you're here, thank you for watching. Welcome. Um, I hope you come back again. <laughs> but I... Yeah, I, I live here, as I said, in Indianola. I have three rescue dogs here at home, um, our newest of which is from Kayakota Humane Society. We have three children. Um, well, I guess one is an adult now. He is 18, officially. Um, and then my daughter is eight, and my youngest son is three. So you may hear some barking. You may hear some kids calling mom. Uh, I'll do my best to edit that out, but this is my life, so it happens. Um, yeah, so I figured I would start with what I'm working on, because I don't have any finished objects right now. I have some half-finished objects, um, but we'll start with whips. So, one of the things that I have picked up recently is the um, Coziest Memories Blanket, uh, or spinoff of it that, I guess. I am using fingering weight leftovers, scraps, what have you, to um, with the recommended needle size to make these sort of nine patch squares. And then I'm doing a square, just like a solid square of a big one in between. So it's sort of like a quilt. So we have a nine patch, a solid, a nine patch, a solid, a nine patch. And then I'm going to alternate. So right here above this will be a solid, here will be a nine patch, and so on. And I'm making it pretty large. I can't get it all in the photo. You'll notice a mistake here. I'll talk more about that later. But it's it's pretty long. It's my arm's length. And then I am doing a border. With my sort of larger leftover portions of um, fingering that will go all the way around the quilt. So it will be, you know, a generous throw size. I get when it's done, but it's going to be a long time coming. Uh, I really like how it's coming out so far. I did have an oopsie. Um, given that this is a blanket that I'm going to be using in my own home with my immediate family, it's not a gift knit. It's not something that I'm going to be wearing anywhere. It's just a cozy comfort thing, and I'm not going to stress about it. So... What I did when I was knitting, because I am I'm making sure that all of these lines do go in the same direction. And when I was knitting this one, I had been working on another... Hi, sorry about that. My memory cut me off. I had to go back and delete some things in my phone. Um, <clears throat> anyway, what I was saying is I had been working on another garter project, which I'll talk about in a minute, but that one was knit in the round. So you knit one round, 
you purl one round, you knit one round, you purl one round, whereas this one is knit flat, so you just knit it, flip it, and knit it. It's all stockinette, even though it turns out harder. And I made that switch to this project and kept doing what I was doing in that project. So I knit and then I purled. And that resulted in, you know, double stockinette instead of a stockinette purl, a stockinette purl. So that happened. Um, but like I said, I'm not going to stress over it. So that's how this one is coming along. It does have like a really nice weight to it. Once it is all knit up, I think it's going to be a really comfortable blanket. And it smells delicious because I am, for my, my solid ones, using um, a cone of Holstgarn Super Soft from Denmark. I love their yarn. Um, it is a super affordable option if you want to knit with wool because of the quantity that you get for the price. It is a rustic woolen spun light fingering um, that you get, I think it's like 3,200 yards. It's a 500 gram cone. And when you catch their sales, it's like $18. So well worth it. You could get several projects from one cone and I love it. Some people say that it's a little rough on their skin, that they don't care for it. I don't mind. And once you wash it once or twice, um, which you do need to do, there is still quite a bit of the spinning oil on this yarn, um, which is part of why it is so affordable. They don't have to um, spend the time and the money to wash all that out before they sell it. So um, it does take one or two washes to get all of that out. Uh, but once you do, it blooms quite a bit and it softens up and I really love it. So and that's what I'm using. So it's a combination of the smell between that and my uh, tuft woolens. Um, and the scent of fresh air, and it's just delicious. And when I'm working with a more rustic yarn like Holstgarn Super Soft, um, I do sometimes, the way that I tension my yarn, I'll get sort of like a callus uh, type thing happening because it's, it's a bit coarse. So I rub this on those areas, and then it also rubs onto the yarn, which gets knit into the blanket and gives it this delightful smell. So... Yeah, moving on, um, I am working on my muscle burr, muscle burro, muscle burr, I'm not sure how you say it, but Kimber from Kimber's Cozy Creations is cast on hers and about the same time as me, so she's been giving me some tips. Um, I was convinced to do it by Kristen and Maddie from the We Share Needles podcast to knit one. They have knit so many. Um, <clears throat> I am using two yarns for mine, which was inspired by Kimber, because that's what she did. So I'm kind of copycatting, um, but she's awesome. She doesn't care. <laughs> so um, this, this is how far I am. I am using, uh, this is from Falling Leaf Fibers. I don't remember the colorway because I haven't been the best about saving my yarn tags. So that is something I need to improve on. Um, <clears throat> but it's these gorgeous fall colors. I love green. That is my jam. Okay. And when I saw this, I was like, I need to have it. And then I went stash diving for... I mean, this was from Stash too, but uh, for something that went well with it. And I have this 90%, um, oh, this is a stock yarn, by the way. This is a 75-25 Superwash Merino Nylon Blend, and it is very soft. Um, <clears throat> this one is a 90% uh, 
Merino. No, not Merino. 90% something wool. I don't remember the breed. Um, and 10% mohair. And it is a slightly heavier weight fingering than this one is. Um, but it has, you know, quite... You can see some hairs in there. It is have a bit of a halo from the mohair. And I think that the color here matches some of the colors in this variegated bit pretty well. So I think it's a nice compliment. Um, and this side will fold in if you're familiar with the muscle burr and then this will be from here essentially what you see and the brim will kind of fold up into a nice beanie. Um, I did do a long tail cast on because that's the only cast on I do. Um, I should probably try and learn some others, but um, it was fine. I, I mean, I cast on, it was a little bit fiddly. I'm using magic loop, um, but I cast on and, and then I just used the tail when I got about halfway. I used the tail to just kind of close up that hole. So I don't think it looks bad. And the yarn is doing something really interesting. On this half, it looks really pretty even and variegated, but then on this half, it starts to do this like spiral. Um, and the stitch count's the same. I have a little blip here where I need to bury my yarn. Um, the stitch count is the same and it changed on me, which I think is kind of cool um, because once I turn it out, I can wear this on the outside and have a spiral or wear this on the outside and have it nice and even depending on my mood and I think it's fun so that's my muscle burr gur, 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 I don't know if you know how to say that please let me know in the comments because I feel silly um oh here is the tag I saved the tag for the middle yarn. So it is from the Fiber Co. Um, <clears throat> they're fingering Cumbria. And let's see if it has a colorway. Ripple? Cal I, I can't say that. Rep. Freckle Keld. I don't know if you guys are going to end up seeing this in reverse. <laughs> um, it's obviously a foreign word. Um, let's see. Lustrous blend of Masham wool, merino, and mohair. 90-10% blend. Made in Peru. So I don't know. I don't know what that word means. That is the colorway. And I love it. I, I think I showed it earlier, but it has some different shades in there. It's not just solid. I, I really like that. I think that's gorgeous. So this is living in a project bag that I was gifted by a fiber friend of mine. Uh, who goes by the Wren Wife in Mississippi, and she is a yarn dyer as well. She naturally dyes yarn and roving. Um, <clears throat> she did not make this. She had this from somewhere else where she'd accumulated it, but she thought of me. Um, she usually works on larger projects like shawls, and I knit a lot of socks, so she thought that I could use it. Um, it was made by weathering sheep um not familiar with their shop but it's this rod it is embroidered with a crescent moon and tree and it is designed for two at a time socks so in the inside it has a little zipper pocket and then it has these little magnet closures there's one on each side to put your yarn in so that when you're doing two at a time it doesn't get tangled or color work or what have you 
so I think that's fun and it is just this cute little cute little bag and I love it because my friend gave it to me <laughs> so that's that one uh, next project so I am filming this in October yeah it's still October <laughs> um and I had in my stash yarn that I had pre-ordered in the summer from I don't know how to say it hot, hot knit yarn it's h-a-u-t-e um and she does these really fun like bright colors which aren't usually my jam but she had this really cute Halloween color and I was like I'm making something for Halloween so <clears throat> it sat in my stash and I didn't know what I was gonna do with it um, this is the yarn I hand wind all of my balls so they don't usually um, they won't be shown in cakes because I like to sit there and slow down and get familiar with the yarn and fall in love with it so I hand wind them um, but it's this really fun variegated skein ball mail uh, with purples and green and black and then I have this other <clears throat> one from another dyer which I will link down below because I don't remember off the top of my head um, but it is like a tonal orange like a semi-solid and so I figured I would stripe them together for some socks Sorry, I had a spam call I had to ignore, um, so I'm striping them. And I have one done, so I guess this is a finished object time. Um, this is how it turned out. I am, hello! Hang on, it's my son. He'll pause. <laughs> okay. This is Gage. He wanted to join in on the video for a minute. Um, can you say hi? Hi. Say hi. What's your hi. name? Gage. Gage. And how old are you? Gage is three. Gage is three. Yeah. What is mommy knitting? What is this? Sock. Sock. You have something on your mouth. So this is, are you going to hold it for me? Yeah. Yeah? So I did a one by one rib in the variegated color. Yeah. yeah. The orange. An orange, yes. And I striped it with orange on the leg and the foot. And then <laughs> sort of made like a longer toe version because I got tired of Wait, striping. Wait, no, Mom can show this. No, we're not going to show that. We don't need to show that. That's okay. I shot that. Yeah, that's it's just holding my camera. It's okay. Do you want you want me to shut it? Yeah. Does that bother you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but want we, open? we not we we, we we not happy anymore. Um. You're not you're not happy anymore when that's open. Yeah. Okay. I think I need to fix it. We shall be making it. Let's pause. Um. Okay, we're back. It's fixed. Um, <laughs> the lid on my like camera holder thing was open and he does not like things left open um, doors cabinets he's got a thing so <clears throat> I did a slip stitch I go hold one mom I'll show you okay you show them can you show them this part yeah you hold it up like this yeah slip stitch heel okay. flap and gusset okay. I always do those I have not tried any other heels because they work for me I'm gonna move it over this way there you go. Good job. Okay. And I've just been striping them and carrying the yarn on the inside and catching it like you would with color. No, we we'll call it blue. What? Do you like Yummy yay. Yeah, we did. Do you like that? Yeah, we did it. Mom, it's just like this, huh? Like the A here. Yeah, mommy's ends are in there. I need to bury them. And you will hold my mom. Well, hang on. Let me show something. So I'm just carrying them along the inside so that I have <laughs> less ends to me. Um, 
and it's working out really well. Thank you. Can I put it away in here? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, diggy. Okay, Gage, do it. Put it in there. Thank you. This is living in my Casper bag. It has this fun um, sparkly cotton here. Casper. Oh, there's one more. There's one more. Yeah, there's more Casper. There's some sparkly fabric on the bottom. Iggy. It's lined with bright orange. And I made this bag. Um, you want to hold now? Hang on one second, and then I'll let you hold it. This is my logo. Jessalyn Dunis, and I will link my Etsy shop and my Instagram in the show notes in case you are interested in finding one too of the my bag. I do really like this one. I've been making my bags with wrist handles so that you can knit and walk at the same time because if you're a mom, what other option is there? You know, <laughs> so, um, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, my next project is also a sock, and it is in another one of my Jessalyn Danis bags. But this one is like yeah. velvet, and it's quilted, and it's luxurious, and I love it. And I'll show the inside. The inside is this sort of positive affirmation fabric. My summer sock camp 2022 <laughs> pin on it. Um, I really hope that Kay, the crazy sock lady, still hosts summer sock camp. She shut her shop down, which is bittersweet, but I'm so happy for her. She wanted to focus more on just being creative and doing what she loved. Mom! That looks great. Mom! What? Do you think that's great? Yeah. Yeah. That mom. Yes, that is mom. That's Gage. And that's Gage. Yeah. So, you. my next half-finished object is also a sock, and this is, speaking of K, and I get one to go for mom. These scrappy, a hot for mom. Scrappy sock cow. Um, scrappy, stripy, sock, stripy, scrappy sock. I'll link it. Oh, good job. Look at you. Yeah. This is her design. My cat Hima. It is not a pattern you can download, but she does have a video with her recipe. I just kind of winged it. <laughs> um, Are we mom? I am doing the same thing. One no, by one oh, ribs. Yes, that is my second one. For my main color, I am using stash yarn. It's sort of this speckled oh, gray. And then I picked colors that were in the speckles from stash. So I have a brown. I have a yellow. And a green. So that is my color palette, and I am carrying my yarn along the inside just like I did for my Halloween sock. Da, da, that one too. Um, also, heel flap and gusset. Those are so satisfying too. And both of these socks I am knitting on Magic Loop 2.25 millimeter Addy Rocket Squared, which is my go-to. I am an Addy girl. I love them so much. And then my second sock is getting there. I've just finished the heel turn. I am starting and the decreases. Um, do I see you watch? And I'm starting to stripe the green. So it's getting there. It is almost done. Both of these. Push it down now. now. Are oh, we, can you close it for me? Yeah. We entered in Scrappy Stripey Sock Cow by Kay at the Crazy Sock Lady. My whole bye, Mom. Thank you. And the other one is being entered in the Falling Leaves Sock Cow posted by Earth Tones Girl, who is. Oh, the leaf right here. Yeah, the leaf. She yeah, is just an amazing person. She taught me to knit socks on YouTube through her No Fear sock knitting videos. So, uh, two, I three, will talk four, more five. about that. Three, four, five? Yeah. In another video. Um, but she is just, she's amazing. So, both of those. Thank you. All done. Do next one, this one. Oh, no, I did that one already. Okay. Do we want for big one? Uh, so this is also big. A Jessalyn Janice bag with a faux leather bottom. Down. 
Where is it? Uh, it's too big. It's too big. Yeah. It also is quilted velvet. Uh, uh, you want to show the inside? Yeah. The inside is linen cotton blend that I love. It's in my color green. <laughs> Drawstring closure as well. Oh, no duffel down. Okay, <laughs> we're back. Um, he is watching Mickey Mouse in the playroom right next to me. <laughs> like I said, this this is part of my life. I am a stay-at-home mom now. Um, shh, I have three dogs and I have two kittens. And Lilo, come here. It's okay. That's my German Shepherd. Um, yeah, my my life isn't a perfect social media display it is just my life so if you're here you're here thank you there will be interruptions um anyway okay so this is in a nice big squishy quilted velvet bag that i made um i don't often make bags for myself this one i kept because the stitching on my label was just a little wonky you can see right here and I didn't want to list it like that because it wasn't perfect enough. So I kept it. I could either put it in my discount bin, which is where I put items that have small flaws, or I could keep it for myself. And because it was so magnificent and soft, I wanted it. So it is my sweater bag. And I am knitting a sweater. Um, this is the Garter Marler sweater by West Knits, Stephen West. Um, <clears throat> I love simple mindless knitting, and that's why a lot of my projects right now are simple mindless knitting. I um, started this right after he released the pattern, I think the same day. And I put it away, it was in the spring of this year, uh, 2022, I put it away for summer because it was just too warm it was I, I couldn't knit with it it was making me hot to hold it um but i do love it and i'm almost done i am a little over halfway through the first sleeve and then i just have one more sleeve and i'm done um i am entering it into the hashtag n-a-t-r piece p-e-a-c-e uh, knit Along, hosted by Peace for Peace Crafting and Needles at the Ready. Um, I'm sure everyone's familiar with Needles at the Ready by now. They are one of my favorite podcasts. Kevin and Ray are just amazing. They've shown my bags a few times. I give them bags for giveaways and things like that, and I really enjoy watching their podcasts. So if y'all end up watching this, hi, I'm JJ. <laughs> um so jealous of all the people who got to meet them in New York this last weekend at Rhinebeck, um, the sheep and wool and all that. One day. Anyways, I digress. I am knitting this. Um, it's a DK weight because it's two fingering held double. So I am using another cone of Holst Garn Super Soft in the colorway Truffle. And this one, by the way, is the colorway Spring. This is like a really pretty color. It's like a minty teal, but it has other colors in it. I love it. Um, this one is Truffle, and it is a brown, but it also has little flecks of like cream and blue and red. And, oh. So I'm holding this with various yarns um, and fingering and marling it. But the brown is throughout. I'm just switching the others. And I'm knitting it on the recommended needle size. I am knitting this to be heavy on the positive ease. My dog just opened the door. Um, because I want a nice, big, warm, cozy pullover for our snowy winters. Here in Iowa, it is very different 
from the central coast of California, where we moved from, and it snows. We have seasons here, which is awesome. I love it. Not a fan of the humidity in the summer. That's that's new for me. But the snow in the winter, in the fall, in the colors, on the leaves, it's just gorgeous. My husband is from Texas, and he does not like the snow. <laughs> I love it. So... <clears throat> Granted, I mean, I don't have to commute to work or drive in it very often. I get to stay home and knit and read books and watch the snowflakes fall and cozy up, and that's probably a lot to do with it. But anyway, so this is my garter marler. Can you see that? And I love the way this feels. It squishes. I love the way the colors are playing. This is a very wearable sweater for me. It's big and it's cozy and it's meant to be so that I can put it over other layers and just be warm outside. And it is warm. It is delightful. Um, I did not go down a needle size for the neckline or the ribbing on the bottom, and I will not for the sleeves. I'm not doing any sleeve shaping. It is just straight down, kind of loose. That's the way I like it. Um, yeah, it kind of reminds me of the sweater that the stepdad in um, the Santa Claus movies. You know, he's like, uh, I can't remember his name, but the one where the boy's dad turns into Santa, they made like three of them, and he's divorced from his wife, Santa Claus, and his wife's new boyfriend or husband is like a psychiatrist, and he always wears sweaters that kind of look like this. And it reminds me of that, and that makes me happy. So, yeah, I love my garter marler. It's coming along, and I can just stuff it into this giant project bag. And cinch it up. Yeah, those are all the whips that I've been working on lately. I do have some other ones, but they are in hibernation. Um, yeah. I do have one more whip that I forgot about. So this is also in one of my bags. I believe there is a version of this bag available in my shop still, but it's a medium. This is like a small size which I use for hats and socks and everything. Sorry, I had to go for a little run through the house just now, so I'm a little winded. Um, <clears throat> it is lined with this pretty, what is that called? That pattern. It's not really checkered. I feel like there's a word for it, but I can't remember right now. Um, also has the wrist strap, really pretty faux leather base, I just love it. I love autumnal colors year round, that is just my jam. So this is a very special yarn. Um, I traded for this yarn from the dyer, um, she is on Etsy and on Instagram as Color Me Sheepish, Sheepish. I will link her below. Um, but when I was getting into the Falling Leaves Sock Cow that I mentioned, hosted by Earth Tones Girl, I saw her yarn and I died because it is so pretty. It's self striping. Colors. It is gorgeous. Beautiful colors. So I messaged her and I said, hey, I can't buy any yarn right now, but I love your yarn. Um, do you want to trade? And I said I could trade something from my shop or I can make you something. And she was like, 
so nice and said yes. So I get to knit with her very beautiful yarn. It is in gorgeous colors. So it is this wine plum, this rich golden, and then this sort of mauve lavender. It is so pretty. So I have one done. Um, and this will also be in the falling leaves. These are going to be my new favorite socks, I'm telling you right now. They're gorgeous. One by one rib. Heel flap and gusset. I had a little beep there, and that's okay. Contrasting. She sent me a mini to do my contrasting heels and toes. She was so sweet. So yeah, that's my first one. And... I'm working on my second one. I'm just in blissful stockinette. And yeah, it's so, it's so pretty. Like self-striping yarn is so motivating because you're like, oh, what's the next color? When's the next color? Oh, am I there? I'm there. Let's get to one more color. And it just keeps you going. Or at least it keeps me going. And I love that and I love these colors and I actually think I'm gonna get another pair of socks out of it maybe I'll turn I was thinking maybe scrappy stripey socks but not having to use different yarn for the stripes so use like one main color and then throw some of this in on the leg and the foot mm. or maybe a pair of shorties I don't know <clears throat> We are back again with my co-host. So, I finished with, I finished hose, and I have finished objects. Um, I'm not being offensive. Ho is a term for, you guys know. Okay. So, I wanted to show some shop updates. Ooh, that was, that was, that was, oh yeah. All them. Yep. All those. That sit up. Uh, no, I'll let you show it, but you have to sit up. Uh, purple. You want to show the purple? Yeah. Okay. So, this one or this one? Purple. This one's pink and purple. You want to show this one? Yeah. Okay. Pink so, purple. I guess we'll start with some yarns that I've been dyeing. The yarns that I'm dyeing <laughs> are inspired by the animals over at Kayakota Humane Society. And... Every purchase um, helps support them. So that means yarn, stitch markers, bags, whatever. Um, you want to show it? Yeah. So this yarn was inspired by Tom, one of their Top. cats. Tom is a very large cat. He is all white. He is so sweet. Um, I had so much fun spending time with him to get inspo photos. And I brought this like cat toy yarn ball thing. Oh, what um, did that one? And he that loved one. It. He was. Well, hang on, we'll show that one in a second. So this one was inspired by him playing with that, that colorful yarn ball. I need to show it. Okay, help me hold it. And it has speckles of different colors and pinks and different shades. And it's very fun. I have four of these available in the shop. Two light, two light. And this yarn, two lights, two lights, two lights, is called Tom Meets Yarn. Mom, that highlight. Sorry. That that was high. I saw the camera. Okay. Another animal at the shelter was. And they were okay, not yet it. though. Not they were do it. Okay, in a minute. Was Dutch. Dutch was adopted the day after I took the photos, which is so wonderful. Eight. But I took this photo of him. Eight. With the autumn leaves. Behind him. And I'll, I'll try to insert it. It was just beautiful. And I wanted to dye something from, you know, that photo. We'll sit up and you can show it from that photo inspo. It's always wet. And do you want to help me hold it up? Ooh. And this is what I came up with. 
and it is so pretty. It's it's moody. It was over dyed with sort of that uh, what do you call it? Like a cloak or something. There's a word for it, but it's moody and it's beautiful. But there's still some speckling and some variegation, and they're just these beautiful, 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 beautiful colors. So there's four of these in the shop, and it is called Adoption Day. <laughs> you little booger. It's called Adoption Day because Dutch was adopted the next day. Okay. And we're back. Okay. So, yes, this one is Adoption Day, and I love it. I am so proud of this. So I dyed another one, and there's only two because it started off as another colorway that I wasn't totally stoked with, so I over dyed it, and I really love it. Let me take the little yarn label on it. So this one has some black speckling, and... Their colors and I think it's really pretty so I named this one lizard hunting because it reminds me of sort of the environment <coughs> where you find lizards and cats chasing lizards so yeah there's one of these left one was in a sock set and one is a single and the sock set sold immediately but the single is still available <clears throat> this one is also in the shop this is a one of a kind tonal and it's so pretty it's sort of this like dusty rose mauve color i think it turned out really well and it looks really nice next to this one which i have two of in the shop and this one is called First Hug. Because it's very warm and loving. And it reminds me of the first hug with your new fur baby. How good did those look together? So another photo that I took at the shelter was of a cat named River and he is an all black very petite little cat and he has the most gorgeous green eyes and I will try to insert the photo um the lighting wasn't the best but I wanted to dye some yarn that reminded me of his eyes so I came up with this and it's this gorgeous green speckled with males here <laughs> speckled with some other greens and some browns and it just created this gorgeous there's some yellow and it looks really pretty so there's two of these in the shop and then i was thinking like frisbees and playing catch with the dogs and came up with this one so this one is called chomp the flying disc and it's black and emerald variegated very fun and there are two of these I think these would make a really fun fun pair of socks for a man for a boy or even like a baby sweater toddler sweater <clears throat> and then I came up with this gorgeous fade set. So I also took a picture of this sort of orange sherbet colored kitten in the shelter. I'll try to insert some pictures. She does not have a name yet, but she had these gorgeous blue eyes and they were sort of baby blue, but with different shades of blue in them and they were gorgeous. So I just eat Oh, again.
again, I am a mom. So I came up with this gorgeous fade. And there's sort of this navy, like denim blue. Well, I guess this one's more of a denim. This one's more of a navy. Navy, a denim, and then this baby blue, and it's this tonal fade set. And I really want to see what it gets made into because I think it is so pretty. So that's available in the shop as a set. There are some others as well. These are just the ones that I brought with me. And last but not least, this released last night. This is a six-piece set, so it comes with a bag, two stitch markers, a 100 gram skein, and two 10 gram mini skeins for a sock bed. <clears throat> so, you get this gorgeous Santa bag, perfect for socks or hats with room. Um, it is quilted, vintage Santa. It has a faux leather base box bottom, drawstring top, no exposed seams, um, this handle has like gold sort of sparkle flex in it, and it's so pretty, very festive. <laughs> so if you want to get in the mood for Christmas, this is the perfect opportunity or even a gift for somebody. And Santa in this fabric has this wine colored hat that I loved. I didn't want to go traditional red and green on the yarn. So I took my inspo from that and came up with this. So you get this sort of tonal deep wine color with white and a little bit of green. And then these two minis, one is a tonal, one is sort of speckled for your cuff skills and toes. And then you get two little Christmas ornament inspired, I'll get my face out of there, stitch markers. And the stitch markers might be slightly different with each kit, um, but they're all similar. What's up? I thought I was recording, wasn't recording. But that is the set. There were five mates. Yeah, it's Santa Claus. There were five made, one of them sold. Um, so there are four left. And how cute. How cute is that? So those are in the shop. As for acquisitions. only have one and it's a stitch marker so I did a collaboration with Mouse. yeah with Kimber's Cozy Creations and Charmed and Dangerous now Kimber arranged all of it she came up with the idea and reached out so the credit goes to her but I didn't know about Charmed and Dangerous and she introduced me and she is so cute. Oh my goodness. Her little creations. She makes polymer clay stitch markers. And y'all. Some apple cider. Are you kidding me? So I've been using this on my coziest memories. Spin off blanket. <clears throat> now. I love it. So, Charmed and Dangerous, I will link that below. Okay, so what am I reading? A tire! What? Tire. Does that look like a tire? Yeah, fit tire. I guess it kind of does, yeah, like a trip tire. Yeah, very so, cool. So if you're just here for the knitting, Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. If you'd like to stay for non-knitting 
information. Thank you. 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 Okay, just be careful. Just be careful. Yeah, be careful. So I am reading fairy tale. That title. Stephen King's newest that tire. book. Yes, it, it kind of looks like a tire, but it is in fact a dog. My and tire, a boy my tire. Going down a staircase. My tire. Yeah, it kind of but do you see the do you see the boy and the dog? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Not gonna lie, at first I thought this was a dragon and that this was the eye. And then I read the book and I looked at it more closely. So I'm a little over halfway. And the main character is really starting his yeah. adventure. Um, I feel like the first half of the book really gets you like familiarized with the characters and the relationships that are happening. And once you get about halfway, and it's not it's not like slow and hard to read in the beginning. It's just like a different vibe, right? And then you get a little over halfway, and the adventure begins. I do that, and it's sort of sit down. That was okay. Thank you. It's sort of like a mix between Wizard of Oz, The NeverEnding Story, Grimm's Fairy Tales, all those stories that you know we are familiar with and we grew up on mashed in one with like some adult humor sprinkled in. Oh, we're shaking the camera now. Hang on. Sorry, we're having a pillow fight. Um. <clears throat> I didn't plan to record in my room, but the lighting was best in here because we're like midday right now. So that's where we are. Um, but yeah, I'm really loving this a lot. Um, it's not the type of book that I usually read, and I feel like it's different than Stephen King's usual stories, but it still has that great way with words and narration that he's known for and I'm really enjoying it so push that up oops this has my summer stop camp 2022 sorry did I cover your face yeah I'm so sorry again if you would like to shop my shop Go ahead and follow the link. Um, all my items are created here in the house. It is a dog friendly home. Oh my goodness. Excuse you. Yeah. <laughs> and a child friendly home. So life's nuts. It's crazy. Um, I live with three boys. <laughs> excuse, excuse him. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, that's oh, let's pause. Mommy, mommy has to fix it. A busy bird. No, mommy, mommy will fix it. Thank you, though. You're very helpful. <gasps> this is living in. I you a hot one, mom. Okay, let me show it, and then I'll let you hold it. Okay. Okay. Show me a side. I will let you show it. I'll show me a side. Yes, but first. Show me a side. And it has um. It says, you've got this, you're not alone, just like happy little things. <laughs> okay, this is going really well. Um, it is sort of this green linen. Oh, okay, we'll take that out in a sec. It's this. Okay, sorry, I thought I was recording and I wasn't. <laughs> um, 